Welcome to Paradise in the Pines, a podcast about the people, places, and stories that make this the home of American golf. Brought to you by the Piners, Southern Pines, Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And hello again, everybody. This is Phil Words, President and CEO of the Piners, Southern Pines, Aberdeen Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And we're going to have some fun today. Yeah. We're going to talk about the arts in Moore County with the Arts Council of Moore County. Uh, we have Chris Dunn, the Executive Director of that organization, and Ray Owen, the uh, Development Director for the Arts Council of Moore County. Guys, it's great to see you, and uh, welcome to Paradise in the Pines. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Glad yeah. to be here. You know, we see you guys in the neighborhood all the time and uh, at the coffee shop in Absolutely. downtown Southern Pine, Moore, Ciego. I mean, great coffee, by the way. Yeah. And, uh, and their pastries are to die for, so I had to get that in. But, uh, but no, we appreciate uh, what you do for the arts. I know the CVB, uh, when it comes to tourism, we're all about home American golf. But uh, the arts have a huge impact in Moore County. Just, just each of you talk about what it means to you. Oh, well, for the Arts Council, uh, the arts, that's what we do. We, we, I, I mainly, we are pro- here to talk about or promote the arts throughout Moore County. So it's in the entire county. Um, I grew up with the arts in my life from the time I was in the fourth grade, piano lessons and things like that. And then I got into band and then I became a band geek and all that. So my whole life has been about the arts. And when I got a chance to come by way here, by way of Washington, DC, I did not wait. Are you from Washington? No, I'm from North Carolina, from okay. Eastern North Carolina, okay. but my first job was in DC and I knew I didn't want to stay there. And the Arts Council had a, a job opening, and I, I knew only about Pinehurst, just knew about it. Mm. And then I remember driving into Southern Pines for my interview, and I knew I was like, this is nice. Just driving down Midland Road mm-hmm. and came in, went to the Campbell House where our galleries are, and I was like, this is a different world. I want to be in it. Yeah, <laughs> It's just an amazing place. And that was in 1995. There's been a lot wow. of changes since yeah. then. But um, yeah. it's an amazing place. Uh, we're proud of what we do in, in the county, throughout the county. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, we're in, a, we're, in, we're in paradise. Yeah. Ray, how about you? Uh, well, I'm a native of this region. I was born in Hamlet, just south of here, yeah. and came to live here as a teenager. And I was uh, born into an art-rich world in which, um, as a child, I liked creativity and uh, storytelling. And so on my mother's side of the family, they were writers and uh, from Ardell County in a place called Union Grove. And so yeah, my family okay, yeah. had uh, worked with uh, the Fillers uh, Grove Fillers Convention. Mm-hmm. So from the time I was a child, I was around uh, essentially uh, – Maybe we were hillbillies, I guess, is what people from the outside <laughs> saw us for real. That's what I call you. Yeah, you do. And it, it was kind of fun. But as a child, I kind of hid that part because I remember when there were just dirt roads in that area. Yeah. And it was a family thing. And then you had scholars, people from the Smithsonian coming there and kind of expanding it. And so people like Dot Watson and other mm-hmm. people were yeah. performing there. And it was just part of the culture. And so it was it was more than just the music. It was the storytelling and, and the culture itself, the old time ways. And then here in the Sand Hills, I was exposed to the potters and sea groves. Mm-hmm. So as a child, I, I became a potter. Uh, I'm uh, not directly related to, to the ben. Owens, yeah. to ben, but I've yeah. been friends uh, you know, forever. And then through the Owen and Owens family, it's all the same family, uh, was, I learned to be a potter. And the community has always been real supportive of the arts, uh, literature, and I was fortunate to be in that world. You talked about being here in 95. You've been, you know, right down the road at Hamlet. Mm-hmm. How much has the art, have the arts and the culture here changed since that time? I mean, oh. it, it has to be. I mean, obviously the destinations <clears throat> changed a lot, mm-hmm. but in terms of the evolution of the arts, uh, talk about that. Now, I know Ray has seen more of the change from – from when I got here, being an outsider, I guess you would say, although I might have my, my, I'm a native almost. I should I would be. count you. <laughs> yeah, everybody's I've got my native car. Yeah. <laughs> so when I got here, literally, downtown Southern Pines, the shops closed at five. There was nothing going on after mm-hmm. five o'clock. Now you, it's easy to find a place where there's somebody performing, yeah. singer songwriter. Um, you've got places to go and. Um, when it came to the arts, there were only a few arts organizations here. Yeah. And their per- 
events, programs, concerts were presented sporadically throughout the year. Now there is something for you to do every day. The one thing I remember in the night, late 90s was there's nothing here to do. Mm. I, and five years later, there was a few people still saying that, but it was not true anymore. It started growing. Um, definitely by mid, I think by 2005, there was it, it, that momentum had started. Right. And it's it's gone like crazy now. There, We used to be the only one doing children's theater. And we would do it at the Sunrise Theater because at the time the Arts Council owned the theater. Mm -hmm. And we were the only ones doing it outside of high schools. Now there's Encore Center. There's Imagine Youth Theater that does it year round. So if you're a child that wants to pursue an interest in the theater, you have no excuse for not being able to find someplace. Yeah. All the way from free versions of, of things like we present Mozilla Children's Theater free to any child. And getting into the Imagine Youth and Encore, there's, a, there's a, uh, a price to do that. But it's not that unreasonable. So it's so much more opportunities now than there were in the mid-90s. And mm -hmm. you've seen more than that. And, and talk about that, but also expand on, because we were in such a rural area, you know, we don't have the, the wealth that Raleigh, Durham, Charlotte, mm -hmm. all the bigger cities have. So how important is it to have the evolution of the arts in this time frame over the last few decades in a rural place like this? Yeah, I, I see it, to answer your question, I see it a bit differently from Chris mm -hmm. in that uh, growing up here, this was such a small place uh, and we were all very interconnected, the native population. I mean, I was friends with the Tufts family. I was friends mm -hmm. with R.J. Reynolds, you know, the various people that lived here, the the founders of Baltimore Moss. I remember Catherine Boyd. I, I knew Weymouth before there was a Friends of Weymouth. Mm. And so for me, those connections were always there. And I do agree with Chris completely. They've expanded for the greater world. And so back in the 1980s, I was part of what was then called the Interagency Council. Um, and it was all the different community groups came together to meet once a month to share information. And so we started doing information about the cultural offerings, even in, in the 1980s. And there was nowhere like Southern Moore, anywhere in North Carolina, as far as a rural area. So we had a lot then. And it's just been added to, as Chris is describing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it started, you know, the Arts Council uh, was originally the Sand Hills Arts Council. And uh, it kind of sparked all these other organizations, mm -hmm. Friends of Weymouth, other things came out of that. And it's just grown. And so what's beautiful about it is this has always been a place that's welcomed everyone. And I love that. It's inside mm -hmm. of all the people from here. We love the people that come here and join us to love it. And so what's beautiful is now we can make our world accessible to you. You know, coming here from the outside, you're really learning so much about it. And we can see that you love it as much as we do. I've heard your interviews and I find it very touching when you get full of passion describing your honor to be working to promote Pinehurst. Mm. When I watched that film, I realized mm. I like this guy because you're one, <laughs> no, because you're one of us. I'm, I'm being sincere. Well, thank you. And so what Chris is describing is, you know, Weymouth Center for the Arts and Humanities uh, the Carolina Philharmonic, all these things are making the arts more accessible to everyone that's mm -hmm. coming in from the outside, and it's defining us as a unique culture. So I think it's lovely. You're celebrating your 50th, is it yeah. 50th birthday or 50th anniversary? I guess we're, I get one of the We're calling it a birthday. Okay, <clears throat> yeah. Because we're asking people if they have a story about how the Arts Council impacted them in the last 50 years in any way. Just say, do a video saying happy, mm -hmm. ha happy 50th birthday to the Arts Council. And I'm receiving quite a few now, so wow, I'm great. putting them together. And one time a week, every Monday, we release a new video. Last Monday was Ben Owen because he has an exhibit at the Campbell House or the Arts Council Galleries at Campbell House. Um, next week will be uh, a video with more Philharmonic Orchestra who has a concert coming up. Um, so we're using it as a way to fulfill our mission to promote mm -hmm. the arts throughout Moore County. And um, I'm enjoying it because I'm getting in touch with kids that I saw on stage in the late 90s huh. that are now in New York yeah. performing. Very cool. And um, there's quite a few of those. We don't do the arts programs we do, especially for the kids, to make them artists. Mm -hmm. We just want to give them that exposure. Yeah, give them plant the seed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
And that's what happened to me in fifth grade in school. I went to band and I was like, I'm, I'm kind of hooked on this now and I haven't stopped since. And that was 30, 40, 40 some years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Have to think about it. Too long ago. Now, Ray, Ray, in your role as development director, I, I, I guess membership is a big part of that and, and getting people involved in, in the community. How, how, I mean, you're a very engaging guy, very fairly <laughs> easy to get to know, and uh, it would seem like you would be able to uh, be very successful uh, getting people involved with the Arts Council of Moore County. Well, I was fortunate in that I had uh, been involved as an artist, uh, Arts Council was a physical sponsor for my artwork. Physical. Mm. Physical, sorry, <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> okay. Plus, yeah. I'm now, 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 the, now the physical, <laughs> physical. But, uh, Both, actually. No, yeah. so very, I was very engaged with the Arts Council uh, for a, a very long time. Mm -hmm. And so what made the transition from the uh, private sector, from a uh, corporate job to um, a nonprofit, was that there, there has always been a level of support that has never gone away from the Arts Council. So when I came in and started looking at membership, it's always around a thousand members and it has been for for decades. Mm -hmm. And the, the worst thing that happened was of course the pandemic, we had a bit of a slowdown, yeah. but then all those people come back. And so a lot, it's, it's one of the organizations because it's countywide working with every single uh, arts organization in the county, we have level support and it's easy to get people engaged in, in joining and businesses very involved. You guys are located at the Campbell House. Yes. Uh, for, the, for those not familiar, uh, Southern Pines, Broad Street runs right through it. Mm -hmm. uh, Connecticut Avenue heads down toward Fort Bragg, a uh, mm -hmm. short distance from there. Before you get to Dunkirk Manor, mm -hmm. on the left you have Weymouth Center, and on the right you have the Campbell House. So yes. talk about Campbell House uh, when people go there, and hopefully you've been there. If not, uh, you need to go, and why should you, and what are you going to see there? Oh, it's <clears> – <throat> Campbell House is a is a remarkable place. It is tied to that area because – and you, I know you can speak to the history of it, but it is – there's parts of the Campbell House that predate the present-day Weymouth Center. It literally, mm -hmm. parts were drug across the street by donkeys and horses. Te teams of mules. <laughs> teams yeah. of mules. Yes. So our Brown Gallery, the biggest room we have, was originally part of the original Weymouth House. Mm. Boyd House. Boyd, yeah. Boyd House. Okay. I knew I was going to get something wrong there. So it is a stately manor. 14-acre uh, park. It is owned by the town of Southern Pines. We are happy to have them as landlords. We lease the first floor. It's it's a wonderful place to go to work. We have our galleries there. We have all our offices there. We sometimes do lectures. Uh, we can do classes, um, but we have pretty much maxed out that space. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if, um, I know you know that I, we just asked the town for permission to right. do an addition. Sure. And they gave us their blessing after they saw the plan which would add another 1,600 square feet, another two ADA accessible bathrooms, and an elevator that'll get um, accessibility up to the second floor, and then us access to the basement for storage, which we have none. Um, but this will open up a lot of things. In addition to that, we, we're going to definitely make this a place of a destination by the art. The building will become artwork. If I think I'm explaining that right, the ceiling of the great room will be a work of art hmm. um, done by people, artists that are tied to this area that are the world's best artists out there. I know you can explain it more when it comes to what they're going to do on the ceiling, but I just look at it. If you've never heard of the frescoes out in the mountains, there's a couple of churches or it's probably four, yeah. 14, uh, 14. Actually, I think in Asheville, there are. Um, Asheville's part of it. There yeah. are, there's a total of 14 I've spread throughout this. Western yeah. North Carolina. Okay. My parents took me to a couple of those churches when my sister and I, we were 12, 13, and I didn't know what I was going there, but they are pretty remarkable. And thousands of people go see this just to see the frescoes. So we're going to, in addition to the exhibits that we do, the actual building inside will become a work of art that people will want to come see. Dan, Dan is our... Podcast uh, producer, yep. destination storyteller, painter by trade. Yep. Uh, I painted the latest uh, mural in Carthage. So yep. he would love to be. <laughs> sure, he's probably sitting there going, I would love to say. <laughs> hey, I keep thinking of Lionel Richie uh, dancing on the ceiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
no disrespect to the no. press case. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I don't no. know why that popped into my head, but I, I thought about that song we talked about. <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting. So, how many how many people would this entail? So, the, and, the yeah. project he's describing mm -hmm. uh, in Western North Carolina. The, all the artisans that were that created those all have ties to Southern Pines. Mm -hmm. Southern Pines, for the last forty years, mm -hmm. has a solid tradition throughout the world for classical realism, and so mm -hmm. many of the most noted artists of our generation have trained in the town, and so we still have ties to those people, and so the the concept for the ceiling is that will it, it will be embellished with decorative plaster one of the most noted decorative plaster artists in the world lives in southern pines he's really? a board member huh. he's a board member who and who is this person patrick webb patrick yep. webb okay and then various artisans that that are tied to the frescoes in the western part of the state will be doing panels in the ceiling hmm. and just one of the counties i think it's avery county 25,000 people a year come to see those. I was going to say, well, will you be able to go and come and watch the progress of this? Or Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and people will learn. And the idea is that this cultural corridor where the Campbell House is, you've got Weymouth uh, Center, you have the Arts Council Campbell House, you've got Horse Country, you've mm -hmm. got Fort Liberty, Fort Bragg. Um, along that corridor, it represents the unique culture of who we are as a people of the Sand Hills. And it's a world-class uh, destination. And so the, our concept is that we want people to come here and stay in the town, to stay in the hotels, uh, to come visit and see the art, to understand who we are. The newcomers that come here, that move here, will understand us mm -hmm. and become part of it. And I just think it would be wonderful yeah. for all the shops and towns and yeah. breweries oh. to have people come in. And also, I mean, from more tourism from more yeah. counties, so this is a, a huge opportunity. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we look forward to it. When is this going to get started? We're starting on it now. In fact, yeah. I'm working on the case statement now. And, <laughs> okay. and to be honest, Phil, uh, all the different things that uh, we've heard you talk about when you speak publicly, it we really have taken it to heart because mm -hmm. we really it's helped us understand a lot about ourselves and then the language of this because coming from the creative side the the way in which you know uh, the chamber of commerce for example or a cvb describes uh, a destination or a brand it's really helped us see the cultural brand in a clearer light mm -hmm. right so it's helping us you know we are the home of american golf and everybody you know we're globally recognized iconic golf mm -hmm. destination hosting us opens from now until long after home, I'm dead and buried in 2047. Uh, I don't know if I can make it that long. But, but I mean, we are more than golf. And to be able to diversify and have the diversity uh, amongst the arts and everything else that's going to happen mm -hmm. in this destination, not just currently, but over the next few years, as we double in size and hopefully maintain mm -hmm. and, and preserve all, all those things that are important and historic right. and artistic uh, in our community is, is hugely important. And, and uh, so what you're doing is, is a phenomenal thing. I think that's why we wanted to have you here because I don't think people, uh, maybe people that live here or people that are moving here just don't understand how deeply rooted that the arts are in Moore County. Yeah, we get a lot of people that come in and go, I've never been to Campbell House. And we're like, how long have you lived here? Five, eight years? Mm -hmm. Like the Arts Council is is in the building. Um, there's also the Parks and Recreation. There's also the Boy Scouts. Uh, it is one of those gems of a place that you, you need to go. The good part about the Campbell House is what we do is we have an, um, an art exhibit that changes. I was going to ask you, does that, do the galleries change? Okay. They change almost <laughs> monthly. We have a sales gallery that's pretty much steady, um, great for gifts, but you can come once a month and see something different. And it, and it runs the gamut. It's local artists, it's regional artists, sometimes national artists. Mm -hmm. um, with the addition, we hope to be able to do larger things. We also yeah. hope to be able to exhibit there's because it's a town property, we have they have some artwork that needs to be seen. And it's it's they own it. And it's some is mm. Wyeth um and C Wyeth. Yeah. NC Wyeth. And right now it can't be displayed where it was because I think some water problems um mm. in the in the in the water department building <laughs> of all things. So they it's I don't know where they're keeping them, but <laughs> it is kind of ironic. We <laughs> sprung a leak. <laughs> But they, we, with this new addition, there will be space in there that we can actually um, exhibit that on on a permanent basis. Yeah. Plus some other things that may be of historical significance 
um, as, as well as creative. Yeah, the town's collection we'd be able to house in a town building. Yeah, yeah very mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing you see throughout the county are murals. Um, yes. You know, most of them concentrated in downtown Carthage. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see some in Aberdeen, uh, Southern Pines, finally getting into the mural <laughs> business, yes. you know, which is great. Uh, and the very first one was absolutely stunning. Yep. Uh, talk about Nick Napolitano. Oh. Um, how did you find him, first of all, and, and tell that story and how he yeah. uh, came here? That was a three-year-long process. So uh, Steve Harbor of the Harbor Place, mm-hmm. the family, the Harbor family, wonderful family, came to the town and said, I would like to do a mural. I already have an artist. It was Nick. And we want to do it there. And the town said, we don't do murals because it's a sign. And the sign, um, it, it, the way the ordinances are set up, I, you have to have a sign exemption for the mural. And the mural is going to be large, too large to be a sign. Mm-hmm. So they reached out to the Arts Council, and we set up a program that used the ordinances, sign ordinance, in order to make that a work of art. There was one exemption in there, or work of art. It will be exempted. But you had to go through a process of being um, approved, so we set up a committee that involved the town and, 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 and community members and business members. So long story short, they said yes, and um, even – when we saw the proposal of what Nick was going to do, it definitely tied to the area with horses Mm -hmm. and the experience of doing that. I think it lasted two weeks of him from nothing to having a full, wonderful mural, wonderful work of art that was just given to the town by the Harbor family. Um, That was the most fun I've had watching art just happen. And Nick was the best person to start with. In that sense, he he got what we were trying to do in mm-hmm. terms of he he met with anybody that would meet with him. He, he talked to them. Um, he was a little a celebrity for about a couple of weeks. Yeah. So we we're very proud of being a part of that, and I'm 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 very thankful to the Harbor family and to the town for making that possible. Talk about the your, your impressions of the mural. Oh, I th- um, again, I echo what Chris is saying. We were so lucky that Nick was the first artist we worked with because he immersed himself in who we are as a people and really did listen. And his level of sensitivity was, was so astounding that he really helped us launch this project that we do want to continue on yeah. into the future. We'd like yeah. to do many, many more of these. And people have been coming forward that want to – supported uh, business owners really wanted to be a part mm-hmm. of it and mm-hmm. and see how that they all fit within this uh community the town <laughs> oh my god just incredible yeah. to work with because mm-hmm. you know the town is everyone knows we're so popular now and we're having to work with all the newcomers and prepare for like you say a doubling of the population and it's going to take all of us together you know, and I, you and I have talked about that quite a bit, yeah. and people on the town staff are talking about it, and we're going to get there. Mm-hmm. And so now we've got to have uh, uh, the ordinances support murals in appropriate places mm-hmm. a- as part of mm-hmm. our unified development code. And so the long-range planning currently is working to remedy that, and the town council and um, and staff, and it's just great. So once we get some more approvals done, we're, we're ready to do more of this, and we will yeah. help with fundraising and pull this together for the community. So right now we can't do any more murals because okay. they got rid of all sign exemptions. Gotcha. And there's nothing in the ordinance that says you can do a mural or, mm. or how to do a mural or this is the process. So that's got to be put back in the UDO, and I'm, I'm working on getting – language for that. I know Carthage has it written into their mm-hmm. ordinances, and theirs is more but the, the, focused the on town, history. The town is uh, receptive to it, though. Totally, right? totally. totally. Oh, yeah. It's just got to be written into it so there's no abuse of it because there, I, I mean, you you don't want to lose the character of the town. Right. But and, it, it, it's so it's so beautiful, oh. and it, it really, you know, the equestrian history of mm-hmm. Southern Pines in this area is is so deep, it just makes total sense. Oh, yeah. And, and I think it's it's called the, the past, present, and future of yes. a question, exactly. basically. Yes. Uh, yes. I don't know if you know it, when they had the dedication mm-hmm. uh, late afternoon, it was really cool because the sun kind of came between the trees and only lit up that part of the mural yes. of the horses. Everything yes. else was shaded. Yeah. 
And I, I remember when I used in my NASCAR days, uh, I covered NASCAR for three years, and like Jeff Gordon had this special paint scheme <laughs> that if you if you moved around the car, it changed colors. Yes, I forget the something chrome, not monochrome, because that's one color. But um, but huh? Come on. Candy something color. like that. But I mean, it was cool. You walked around the car, but it almost seems like that mural, depending on how the sunlight hit mm -hmm. it, it like didn't change. There were just certain things that would pop out and yeah. you would see certain things just based on the sun, the way the sun hit it. And I was like, it's changing as I'm watching it. Every was, day, all day it does that. It you're was really right. cool. I didn't, it didn't dawn on me, but you're right. And I think mm -hmm. it has to do with the texture of the material it's put upon that because it's got little dimples in it. And it's producing these little shadows, and as it's moving across, it's catching the yeah. light differently. One thing that I thought was, I remember from that, I forget the the artist, the musician who played there. Oh, Abigail Dow. Abigail Dow. Yep. And she made a point, and, <laughs> and I laughed out loud, but she says, I am so glad there are no golfers here, because this is not about golf. This is about horses. This is about equestrian. <laughs> she was so passionate about yeah the history of equestrian and that, you know, this is not about golf. I thought it was awesome. I'm glad yeah. you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm and the home of golf. But again, <laughs> you know, all of these, you know, just like me talking to you about my passion for culture and art and being the flip side of the resort coin. And again, we're all working together to try to learn to tell our story together and we're going to get there. And I, uh, again, I appreciate, you know, in the time I've known you, I started by interviewing you for a yeah, story. Yeah, I remember. You know, you read the story and I weave in the history. I'm thinking, I'm going to get Phil to know our history. <laughs> and it works because you yeah. read it. And then uh, we, what it is, is for, uh, for all of this to work as a cultural brand, you know what it is. It's in the air, but we are working to define it. The various pillars of what it are. What it is, not what it are. You can tell I'm <laughs> from Hamlet. But uh, I no, understood it, you perfectly. No, thank you. You're from. We well, you said you were a hillbilly. I know. <laughs> I've proven it. But no, um, it's going to take all of us to d define, you know, literature, the arts, mm -hmm. uh, only pine preservation, uh, the sporting life, golf, equestrian, and community design. People leave that out. It was the intent of the Boyds. The, the piece that Abigail was referencing was that funny letter that James Boyd wrote to the editor of the News Observer, acting like he was insulted because he was referred to as being from Pinehurst. Yeah. And he said, oh, no, I'm a fox hunter. Well, obviously, it's a parody because the Boyd family, James Boyd's money was coming from being a developer. And they had an interest. They had shares in the Southern Pines Golf Club. They were investing in golf. So, you know, definitely it was funny. And so people... Forget that by design, this was an equestrian and golfing community with yeah. the arts as part of it. And how lucky we are that we mm -hmm. get to move this forward. You know, talking about the future of the destination uh, from a tourism standpoint. So you've got, you know, U.S. Open next year, USGA moving here, World Golf Hall of Fame mm -hmm. coming back. Um, and we're, uh, you know, the roads are going to be expanding. Um Whenever we talk to people or have do surveys and we say, hey, what, are, what is the one thing you'd like to see here uh, built from a tourism product development fund? Uh, and, this, and a lot of people say they want an amphitheater because, I mean, it's <clears> nice <throat> seeing the small stages, things like that. Uh, but one thing that we did um, currently is, is a one-time product fund. We're going to take a, a million dollars of our fund balance right. to fund tourism-related projects. So we went to some of these towns, Aberdeen, Southern Pines, and, mm -hmm. and Paul Sabiston, uh, uh, Reagan Parsons, um, several people submitted because our board were like, hey, what are there are there projects out there? And like, yeah, there are. And mm -hmm. so these were great examples they submitted. And actually the Weymouth Center submitted, you know, what would what looked like about a 2000 person amph semicircular amphitheater where, you know, you can have, you know, the, the Philharmonic play. Mm -hmm. um, they have a vision uh, of having that amphitheater with a walking trail all the way down into Southern Pines. So, you know, you can go have dinner at Chapman's or Chef Warren's or Scott's Table, then take a nice walk up this, and it, maybe it's an art walk, yeah. uh, all the way back up to Weymouth Center, right. a nice lighted trail. I mean, how cool would that be? So just kind of thinking about what is the future, what's moving forward, what's the next thing? Uh, you know, Bradshaw Performing Arts Center was a great addition. So what is the next thing in your mind uh, that this destination needs from an art perspective that can be built that would be something that people would come here from, you know, Charlotte, Raleigh, D.C., Atlanta? Who For us, the, the Great Room Project that we've described would be good because we've got yeah. comparables of other places that have done this and the tourism that has been brought from that. 
And so we can already show numbers of, you know, people were staying in rooms. There's been mm. studies. We've not done that here, but I think the comparable is easy to make, that if you have something that is of that uh, scale, uh, again, Avery County, they're dri driving people from, I think it was 47 different states last year and 17 foreign countries. Wow. So yeah. it, it's an easy jump over to here from there, people coming into the region. Mm -hmm. So for us, it would be that. And then, um, oh, so many things, like the sporting complex that's being done down in Aberdeen, Aberdeen sounds yeah. very, mm -hmm. very interesting. I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, we're all for it. I mean, the more that we can you know, bring people to the destination, uh, not just for golf, but for sports tourism is going to be a big part of the future with what's going on in Aberdeen, what they've already done at the sports complex in Carthage, uh, you know, with the two gymnasiums, the ball right. fields they have there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's plenty of ball field, the, the, the turfing of the field, the Pinecrest, and also at uh, Cannon Park in the village of Piners. I mean, so there's a lot of opportunity there. Mm -hmm. I think we're also, you know, hoping that, there can be some infrastructure built into the northern end of the county because with VinFast moving in um, and all those industries along the 421 corridor with the Carolina core, right. uh, the northern end of the county is going to explode. So, you know, Robbins well, and Vass, I mean, you're seeing a lot of growth in Vass and Cameron already, but, you know, Robbins is another opportunity there. And, and could there be something on the river? Uh, you know, there's a person who owns that dam that wants to remove it and thinks oh. it could be a great white water experience. Um, you know, yeah. maybe there's some recreational opportunities in the northern end of Moore County, which would be great. And since we are the Arts Council of Moore County, um, don't forget there is a theater already there in Robbins that needs mm. to be renovated. They've gotten it to the point where they own the building now, mm. but mm -hmm. they they can't get any they can't get over that hump. It's it's a sizable amount of money they would need to make that a usable per, performing arts space for mm. that area. Interesting. Yeah. And with their ties to the High Falls Fiddlers Convention and that type of music, yeah. they could easily have something ongoing in Robbins that would be amazing. Um, it just um, I'm not sure who's driving that now. Yeah. Um, but that's that, owned by the town. No, it's owned by a nonprofit organization. Oh, really? okay. Yeah, they they raised the money to purchase it. It was a it wasn't a hardware store. What? I don't know. It was a gun shop or something. I'm not sure. It's. I think it, it was a theater. It was a theater, but they had, there was a retail space down in the lobby area wow. before they they bought it back to put it back as a theater. But it needs a lot of work. But that would be amazing to have in Robbins. That sounds great. Yeah. Great yeah. opportunity there. But I can put you in touch with somebody there. I can call Teresa Thomas or somebody to find out who's running that. Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah please do. And uh, as we, we've already done 30 minutes here. <laughs> now that we have to wrap things up, but, but I mean, man, we, we could go on and on oh, for, uh, for days. Yeah, there's so uh, much. We definitely, we definitely need to have you back yeah. for sure. Uh, if people want to get involved with the Arts Council, Council of Moore County website and how can people get involved and donate and support the arts? For us, it's, it's pretty simple. It's moreart.org for our website. Um, stop by the Campbell House. Uh, our number is 910-692-ARTS. So there's easy ways to get in touch with us. How to become a member? Uh, you can join through, securely through our website. So if you mm -hmm. go there, it, you can click on the link that will give you ways to join. And that is the best way to support us is by joining yeah. us. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for coming by the CVB and our podcast studios here in Southern Pines. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we continue to look forward to working with you and supporting the arts. And uh, if you're not supporting the arts, you need to have more county. It's, uh, it's thriving and it's going to grow and it's going to be here forever. And uh, great to have people like you oh. and you, uh, Chris nice. and Ray. Uh, leading the charge. Appreciate Thanks, it. Phil. Arts Thank Council of Moore County. Uh, this has been Paradise in the Pines. If you want to learn more about tourism in Moore County, go to homeofgolf.com. Uh, if you want to watch this vodcast, go to our YouTube channel, which is Home of American Golf. And if you love listening to podcasts, download Paradise in the Pines. Tell your friends, share it. And this has been Paradise in the Pines. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>